Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Life of the Cinema is keeping me super busy, especially with this triple threat of highly anticipated films coming out all within a week's time here in Montreal. And today we're going to talk about the second of these films that I've been highly anticipating, and that film will be Tar. It's a film that I've been anticipating for several reasons. First off, Cate Blanchett is one of the supreme acting powers of our generation, so that is always a default incentive that's going to make us run to the cinema. But by far the biggest intrigue surrounds the director, Todd Field. He started his career as an actor, and most notable, at least for my part, was his brief appearance in the final legendary film from Stanley Kubrick, Eyes Wide Shut. He played the piano player named Nick Nightingale, an old classmate of the protagonist. Later on, they meet at a jazz club where Nick describes a mysterious engagement later that night where he must play the piano blindfolded. If you haven't seen Eyes Wide Shut, what are you waiting for? Now, that being said, beyond his acting career, he really made a mark on the film industry as a writer-director, and he only has two directed films under his belt, which regrettably I have yet to see, so clearly I have homework to do. The first being In the Bedroom, a 2001 film that highlighted Feel as one of the most promising new directors in Hollywood, and earned the film five Academy Award nominations, including for Best Picture. Second, Little Children, a 2006 film that also earned widespread critical acclaim and earned three Academy Award nominations. And in fact, Todd Field was nominated for the Adapted Screenplay Oscar for both films. And as you might have calculated, it's been 16 years since his last film, which is a hell of a long time. During that 16 year period, he had a lot of projects that unfortunately were never realized. Now, I don't know all the details behind those projects, but one in particular that really piqued my interest was the film adaptation of the dreaded Blood Meridian, which is actually the book I'm reading right now. Honestly, it would make one hell of a film adaptation. And though I don't know the reasons behind its cancellation, or if perhaps one day we would have a resurrection of that project, which would be fucking awesome, I can imagine why this would be a really complicated production because Jesus Christ, it's one hell of a book. Though more on that on another day, once I've actually finished the book and had some time to process it. Anyway, back on track. 2022 finally sees the resurrection of this man's career with his latest film, Tar. He has massive expectations to meet after all these years, but the teaser trailer that first introduced me to this film left me stunned and wanting more. I'd like to take a moment to impress you how ref refreshing it is to finally have a film trailer that doesn't spoil the entire narrative arc of a film before even stepping foot inside the cinema. Christ almighty. This is easily one of the most powerful trailers I've ever seen. Now at this point, if you're already interested in seeing the movie, just go check out this teaser trailer I mentioned. I will leave a link in the description. So check out the trailer, watch the movie, go see it, and come back if you're so inclined. Anyway, as I was heading to the cinema, I was quite tired already, and I was rather daunted by the 2 hour and 38 minute runtime of the film. I was thinking to myself like, my god, what happens if I fall asleep? I've been genuinely anticipating this film for quite a while, so I, I, was, a bit, I was a bit worried. However, that was impossible, I was never going to fall asleep on this film. I was simply spellbound and on the edge of my seat throughout the entire runtime. Now, the first and last thing to acknowledge here is the absolute powerhouse acting performance of Kay Blanchett. She is Lydia Tarr, a fictionalized character who is one of the most celebrated living composers of her time and is at the absolute height of her power and her fame. The first scenes of the film are just filled to the brim with detail on the core values of her character. At the beginning of the movie, we bear witness to an interview by New Yorker Adam Gopnik. It's a long interview and a bold way to start the film. In the hands of other screenwriters, I dare say this may have been a bloated scene, but under the care of Todd Field, we are given an incredibly elegant exposition dump. We learn that she is an EGOTH, winner of all four major entertainment awards, that is an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony Award. And we gain a detailed master's perspective on her craft, its history, and a fascinating speech on how she controls time. There's a lot packed into this first scene, and already from the start, my eyes are wide open. Next, we see her influence on one of her fans, a young woman who looks up to her. We catch the first seeds of dark themes of abuse and manipulation that the film slowly builds upon. This is hinted at us by the quiet and tortured performance of Lydia's assistant, played by the French actress Noémie Merlin. You may recognize her from that stupendous French historical romantic drama Portrait of a Lady on Fire, or better known in French, Portrait de la jeune fille en feu. And then, still within the first act of the film, we see how she teaches students what it is to be a maestro conductor. And apparently this scene was expressly filmed as a one take, which I didn't know going into the film. But you know, with a bit of hindsight, it makes a lot of sense why this kind of creative choice was taken. It is a tense and dense scene that is once again 
packed to the brim with detail. And on top of that, a head-on collision won the student that dismisses Bach because of his woke views. It's a confrontation that leads Lydia Tarr to completely eviscerate the student in front of the rest of the class. Honestly, it's kind of brutal. It is from this point on that we are faced with one of the biggest questions that the film presents us, but never quite answers for us. And that is, can we separate the art from the artist. Near the scene's conclusion, she shouts, you must stand in front of the public and God and you must obliterate yourself. And she says this as the student is storming out of the class. We haven't even finished the first act of the film and there's already a mountain load of thought-provoking content. Kay Blanchett has already set a very high bar with her stellar career. She's been awarded two Oscars for supporting role in The Aviator and for leading role in Blue Jasmine. But this may very well be her most powerful, nuanced, and complicated performance of her career. And that is no small feat. For her role, she has learned to speak German with barely a hint of an accent. She learned to play the piano, and the film isn't shy to show her playing the instrument, whereas most films would conveniently focus on a close-up to hide the player's hand, reminding us that this is indeed an actor and not the real thing. And finally, she learned the intricacies of being a maestro conductor, which she enacts with tremendous confidence and power. Kay Blanchett has taken no shortcuts. She went the extra mile to transform into Lydia Tarr. The immersion is rock solid and made me forget that I was watching a film. Tarr is a film that has been written and directed to perform Perfection by Todd Field. Each word spoken in every event is carefully measured and adds layers upon layers to the narrative arc of Lady Tar. It is one hell of an accomplishment. The film starts out as an intricate character study of a genius music composer, but slowly evolves into a psychological thriller and damn near borders into psychological horror territory. By the time the film ends, I am left with more questions than answers, which I think will result in the film greatly benefiting from multiple viewings for our viewers to peel back the layers of this multifaceted, complex, and massive script. There isn't one aspect of this film that hasn't gotten that same minute attention detail and love and care. Take the immaculate visual design of Tar, for example. Each frame of Tar has been carefully crafted. The props are perfectly married to the composition and guide our gaze seamlessly. It's gorgeous and technically effective cinematography. The color palette is equally profound, leaning more towards the cold gray and white, which perfectly complements the precision and perfection of Lady Tar's adamantine personality. But there's a healthy contrast of warm colors, yellow and orange notably, that bring a much needed variety and highlight key narrative elements in which lighting plays an instrumental role in the film's visual language. The locations are equally a marvel to behold, whether we are in pristine auditoriums or in one of Lady Tart's designer homes, with walls that are lined with shelves bursting with books and art pieces, or in luxurious hotels, as well as some surprises which I will not spoil. Even the costumes reflect the calculated perfectionist nature of Lydia Tar. Truly, Tar is a stunningly beautiful film, whichever way you choose to look at it. Finally, this is a film about music, so you would expect the sound design to be handled with the same meticulous care, right? And of course, that assumption won't go unrewarded. However, I must note that this is a deeply unsettling and anxiety-inducing film about music. It ranges from both extremities. The orchestral playing is thunderous, mirroring the explosive emotions of the narrative. And then subtle, barely audible sounds. The silence is a vital part of the experience that gives power to the violent contrasts. If there's any complaint to be found, it's in how overwhelming of a film this may be. Don't get me wrong, I'm fine with it. I love this film, but you might not be. As always, to each of their own. But shit, I'm still reeling after my first viewing. This isn't some simple butter cookie that you just crack in half swallow and digest instantly. I dare say Tar is more akin to having a massive rock just rammed down your throat. Good lord, what a film. I imagine director Todd Field didn't actually spend the entire 16 years since his last film writing and preparing this film, but it sure feels like it. With a bit of distance after watching Tar and having some time to reflect, I'm reminded of how I felt after watching films like Raging Bull or There Will Be Blood. These films are very much character studies of these massive towering figures, featuring actors that deliver an earth-shattering performance, so powerful that you're left processing long after the credits have rolled. Going into this film, I had no idea what to expect. All I knew was that outstanding teaser trailer that gave absolutely nothing away, which was honestly a beautiful experience for me. That and the existence of rave reviews from just about every critic under the sun. 
I want to highlight that though I have caught one of the universal praise before viewing to all, I mean, it was kind of impossible not to notice. I always make an effort to mind wipe as much as possible so I can hold my own counsel because I think that's important. I apply that to every movie, every game, every album, every book, whatever. It's a universal rule for me. And that's not to say that like, I'm not going to accept recommendations. In fact, I'm more than happy to. I mean, God knows how much I owe to friends, YouTubers, or critics alike. But I always make the effort to go in with as little expectations as possible so it doesn't color the experience for me, so I can make up my own mind about how I feel about it, whether it's for good or bad. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time where my opinions would differ from the general consensus. Now, all that being said, Tar has wildly surpassed my expectations. It is a masterpiece from director Todd Field and an absolute meteoric performance from Kate Blanchett that will undoubtedly go down in the history books of cinema. The only reason I can see her not winning her third Academy Award for this film would be to simply give the Oscar to someone who has yet to win. Which, you know, fair enough. I mean, at this point, it's no secret. It's been years since we all recognized Kate Blanchett as one of the acting tool de force, not only of our generation, but really of all time. But good god damn, the power. The nuance, the depth, Tar is worthy of a 10 on 10. To each their own, of course, but I think this film is simply extraordinary. And that is all for today. I kind of wish I left this film for the last of the three of this week, because it's a lot to process. Nonetheless, I'm very much excited to see the last of the three films, which in this case would be The Banshees of Inishirin. I'm very much excited to see what Mara McDonough and the entire cast have brought to the screen. It sounds like a really fascinating film. But yeah, Tar, what a fucking movie. So that is all for today. As always, sending you all my love, take care, and talk to you soon.